Hello guys, so in this series we are bringing on board how to write Java program. So this is a crash course for Java tutorials from scratch to the end. So stay tuned to us and let's look at some of the cool things in Java. So what we are bringing to you is um, this categories we've listed here. So we have Java introduction to Java, Java variables and data types, and operators, control statements and methods in Java, classes, objects, and OOPS concepts. Yeah, the OOPS concept is one of the most derived and popular way of programming that has gained a lot of momentum in the sequence now. So we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at exception handling in Java. We're going to look at Java collection frameworks and the don't pass in Java. So these are the agenda and basically what we're going to be talking about in this crash course. So let's look at what Java is. So what is Java? Well, a lot of people have different or one, two opinions about Java, but actually Java is a computer programming language. So it's a programming language that enforces object oriented programming model. So the object oriented programming model is a model that helps makes programming easy. So Java enforces this model of programming and java is a programming language that was actually um, <clears throat> brought into being or was released by sun microsystems in 1995 java was, was created by a team led by james gosling and you know others and they actually uh, java was a platform that was introduced for other papers but it began to do other great stuff so it became uh, used for computer related programs and now it's very popular. Java is a platform independent language that enforces the logic of write once, runs everywhere. So with Java, whenever you write your code, you can always use it in various functions in various ways. So Java actually brings a lot on board and it can be used to create applications that may run on single computers or can be distributed among various servers. So Java does a lot. Let's look at some of the features in Java. So starting from 1 to 12, Java enforces the object-oriented model we've talked about. Java is simple, secured, platform independent, is robust, portable, architecture neutral, is dynamic, interpreted, high performance, multi-traded, distributed, which is what Java is. Java has these great functions and it will help you do a lot when you focus on this programming language. These are looking at vividly the features of Java. So we share the simple, Java is easy to learn and its syntax is quite simple, clean and easy to understand. So the confused and ambiguous concepts in C++ are either out or is left out of Java totally or they have been re-implemented clearly and clean in java so you don't necessarily need to be thinking about if you are prone to c plus plus or maybe you're thinking about whoa is java also going to be like c plus plus no it has a different entire platform easy and it's very fun to learn high performance although java is an interpreted language it was designed to support just in time from pilots and which dynamically compile bytecodes into machine code. So whenever you write your code, Java converts those codes into machine codes that makes it easy for the computer to understand. That, that is why it has high performance usability. Also, secured, secured. Java can be used to develop antivirus platform. In Java, is termed as secured because of some of these cool things it has. If, if the system has capabilities that can use to prove uh, design programs that cannot be infected by virus like antivirus that could be help you to um, uh, fight against virus and do you know that other cool programming languages or other systems that does not use or uh, are not affected by virus are also developed on the java platform which you're going to be looking at that so java programs runs inside a virtual machine sandbox to prevent any activity from untrusted sources so no use of explicit pointers are in Java, which of which you can uh, testify that explicit pointers are in C++, but this is not in Java. And Java is robust. Java checks the codes during the compilation time and runtime. So 
Java completely takes care of memory allocation releases, which makes Java more robust. So with Java, there is um, a robust platform that makes your coding and learning Java very cool. So I trust with learning Java as a programming language, you're going to love and you're going to do a lot of great stuff. And Java is dynamic portable so we jump a little features from that point and now it's distributed so when you say distributed you have the remote method invocation that is i uh, we use for creating distributed application using java and using this program can run a method of another program running in other computers on the network so you can use a program and it can run you can use um using this program can run a method and other programming running platforms also to help you so you can use java basically when you develop like java systems like let's say a game you can easily distribute to send to somebody um to be a, you can share it across platforms and all of that so that is the cool thing about java and it's multi-traded so thread is a task in process or for program and multi-trading is a multi-purpose task running which is executing at the same time this facilitates in providing Java as so that many tasks can be executed at the same time. And Java is object oriented. This is what we'll be talking about. Java is an object oriented program. It enforces an object oriented concept. And as, um, every time it performs using objects, Java can be easily extended since it's based on the object oriented model. So these are some of the cool features in Java so far. So features with Java actually makes it very easy to use because of some of the cool things that programmers enjoy when they learn programming. This is some of the places you can find Java or some of the uh, various environments that Java has made impact at. So we have embedded systems. Java is a platform where you can only you only need about one thirty kilobyte to use Java platform on a smart card and web servers and application servers also includes java so like apache you, i trust you know about apache apache is used for uh, website development and or a, a lot of other service platforms so um, some like um web servers project so web server logic wexford and a lot the, all these platforms have some form of java and enterprise applications so java enterprise edition is a popular platform that provides apis and runtime environment for scripting and writing enterprise software so that is some of the cool features or where you can find java and not to forget android yes all android applications are written in java programming language with google's android api which is similar to the java development kit so you, you get it so android is actually from java so you can still you means since android is not going anywhere soon means you need java to focus and also develop a lot of systems and also several apps at financial institutions various financial institutions develop their systems on java so some like Backlist, we all know Backlist, Standard Chartered, and other banks also have platforms that they use that are developed from Java. So Java is not just for mobile apps and web, it's also for the financial institutions for fintech related projects also built on Java. Java web applications, many government and healthcare, insurance, education, and finance and all of that have their web applications built using Civlet, Java uh, platform, and other Java platforms. So, Java is actually um, very cool and it helps you do a lot. Now let's look at some of the differences between Java and C++. So you can see that the small circle on your left shows C++ which well it tells you the few features. And the big circle on your right, it's a big circle which indicates Java. So inside we have Java um, runtime environment java virtual machine and java operating system so it means there are more features on java than there are on c++ it doesn't mean c++ is irrelevant but java has a lot to offer that's some of the cool things on c so these are some of the 
different between Java and C++. So Java is platform independent, C++ is platform dependent. It means it will need other supporting tools. And Java is mainly used for application programming. It is widely used in Windows, web-based, enterprise, and mobile applications. C++ is mainly used for system development. So it means Java still does more than C++. Java was designed and created as an interpreter for printing systems, but later extended as a support networking computing. And it's designed with a goal of being easy to use and accessible to broader audience. But C++ is designed for systems and application programming. So it was it was an extension of the C program. C, pro, C was a programming language. I'll say C is the mother of C, uh, C++ and Java. So C, uh, Java, um, C++ was an extension from the C programming language, which has actually made impact from the past. So I'll say the modern part of C++ and C is Java. Java does not support the Go statement of which is available uh, go to statement of which is available in C++. So this is some of the difference between Java and C++. So um, you can pause the video and look at some of the amazing um, difference in Java and C++. So looking at a simple syntax, when you look at this syntax, if you're prone to C++, by looking at this syntax, it gives you a clear idea of what this is. This is a simple syntax for C++. So in here, we have hash include and into the uh, less than and greater sign. You see IO stream and using namespace that and main and you see those two parentheses and after that are curly brackets where you have your first printing for hello world or hello C++ programming. So this is a simple syntax to write your hello world programming in C++. So this is a clear view of uh, C++ and you can tell it's uh, quite lengthy but when you look at this this is a simple syntax for Java. And this you can see from here C uh, um, class main, and in this two curly brackets, straight away you get your simple syntax. And this system.out print gives you the simple R look to print your hello world or your hello Java program. So this is a simple default syntax for writing your program in Java and you can see it's very simple and easy and it follows a simple trend. So it means writing your Java code is as easy as that. So applications that run on Java. So there are various applications that actually run on Java. A lot of them from um, Acrobat Reader. I trust you have, you have seen Acrobat Reader, Media Player, Antivirus. These are some of the desktop applications that runs on Java. And web applications such as um, Java points and etc. They are all run on Java and enterprise applications such as backend applications, mobile apps, embedded systems, smart cards, and all of that are all run on Java. So these are some of the applications actually. So these are the, some of the reasons and the cool reasons why you should be learning Java. So you can pause the video and look at the standalone applications, read some of the elements and some of the cool things that comes along with it. Web, web applications are also built on Java and and that so java is actually very cool and essential for programming development so these are the four main platforms that um, are used to develop java so we have the java se or the java standard edition there is a java programming platform and it includes java programming apis such as java.line java.io java.net and all the other elements under it these are all elements that help java become more simple and we have the Java Enterprise Edition. The Java Enterprise Edition is an enterprise platform which mainly is used to develop web and uh, enterprise applications. So it's a built in top of the Java, uh, it's built on the top of the Java SE platform and includes um, topics like the Civilage, GSP, web service, and all of that. <clears throat> so these are the four main pillars or the four main types or editions of Java runtime environment you're going to need in developing your system so on on <clears throat> now let's look at a simple um way of um, how java it works and in our next video we're going to look at practically what they how to work around java and the cool things that comes along with it so see you soon and don't go anywhere follow up on our next tutorials on java and i trust you're going to love it Hi guys, if you are still here, it's awesome because 
the follow up with our basic introduction on Java and we're going to add up how do you set your Java environment. Actually setting your Java environment you don't need a lot of stuff. You just need to download the Java development kit. Java development kit is a is the environment you're going to need in developing your Java applications. And you also need an editor. Some of the cool editors like um, IntelliJ, like NetBeans, like um, Eclipse and others are some of the cool um, editors out there. Normally in developing your programs in Java, you don't need an ordinary editor. You need an editor with an integrated development ID. So some editors like um, like uh, Sublime, like Atom, like well, think of the rest. Or oh, Node Plus Plus can also do some form of Java, but you need to go through and do some other setups to get it to execute your code. But if you use an editor like um, the ones with integrated development environment, it's easy and you can actually be able to execute your code easily after you write your code. So let's look at some of the environment and how to set your environment and we'll pick up from there. Hello guys, welcome back to another series of our introduction to Java. In this series, we're going to look at setting up your Java runtime environment. Java runtime environment. When we talk about setting up your Java runtime environment, remember in our previous video, we looked at what Java is, why Java, and the difference between Java and C++. In this section, we're going to look at how to set up your Java runtime environment. Setting up your Java runtime environment could be a little challenging if you don't know, but it's easy for those who follow up with this video. The reason is that we are just bringing you the sequence and all the nitty gritties you're going to need to get your Java runtime environment set. So what do you need? This is what you need. First of all, you need to get any of these Java standard editions and it is either the this Java Standard Edition, Enterprise Edition, Micro Edition, or the Java Card. These are what you call the Java Development Kit. You need any of these to start writing your Java programming. For writing a simple programming, you're going to need um, something like the Enterprise Edition or the Micro Edition for um, mobile development and the Java card for Java card. If you're looking at developing a standard program or a broad based program or platform, you need a standard edition. So these are the Java development kit editions you're going to need. And these are some of the other things you need. The other thing you need is an editor. So after downloading the Java development kit, you need an editor. An editor, we have a lot of editors, ordinary editors like um, 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 like Sublime, like Atom and others. Those are all ordinary editors you can use to edit other code. But in order for it to make it easy for Java, for you to be able to compile your code, you need a standard editor with an integrated development environment, an IDE. An IDE is an environment that helps you to compile your code after you write them. So in Java, it is required that you use um, an, an, an editor with an IDE. And this, some of these editors are examples of the ones you can use. So we have NetBeans, Eclipse, IntelliJ. For the sake of this class, we'll be using IntelliJ to be writing our code. So I require that if you like to, in following up with this course, you should download um, IntelliJ for easy and work through. So in getting your Java um, development kit, if you don't know where to go, you can just go on to this website. It's as easy as that. Um, just check on oracle.com and you can just um, get your Java development kit to download. So you realize that these are the versions and different types of it. So you can use any of this to get your, to download and then get your setup. And <coughs> These are the types of Java uh, development kits available. So if you're on Linux, there's a version for Linux. And if you're on Mac, there are versions for Mac. 
for Windows as well. There are versions for Windows. Now you can see that this is all 64. So if your Windows is 64, then you download 64, which is suitable for your Windows. If you are, your Windows is 32 bits, then you don't need to download 64. You need to get 32 bits, the one that is suitable for your platform. So this is how you'll be able to get your Java development environment downloaded and installed on your computer. So if you're on Mac, if you install it, it means you might go through the simple way. You're going to see it looks like this and it will follow up till it gets to sound. If you're on Windows, it's much easier and it's easy to install. So the requirement for to write your first Java programming is first of all, you install, you install your Java development kit. Then you install, so you download your Java development kit. Then you set your path. Setting your path is um, a way of trying to uh, give your your files the opportunity to develop, to locate a Java development kit. So when when you setting your path, you set it that okay, my Java development kit is in this folder. So when you're looking for it, you go there. So that's why it's necessary to set that path. And also we create the next one will be to create our Java program. So we're going to look at how we set our path in our next video. So, so at this point, we're going to learn how to write our first Java program. So writing our first Java program, we use the simple syntax we have over here. That is from one to five. First of all, we put in our class and our class main. Then we open these two carry brackets, this one and that one. Then we write this next synthesis, public static void main. Then we open these two carry brackets and we put in this. So this function system.out.print is a function that is used to declare hello world. Or it's used to execute, execute this file. We're going to do a workable example so that you're going to see how it looks like. So whenever you click on or you, you compile your calls, the calls go through this channel. The calls from the start and it goes to the compiler. The compiler pass, compiles the files and then it it converts into byte codes that the computer is going to understand and then it sends it straight away and then the computer gives a solution that is how our files are compiled now let's look at a simple way of parameters that are used in, in our first java programming <clears throat> so our first programming we're going to need this simple syntax class public static void main string and all of this now let's see why class a keyword to declare a class in java so whenever you want to declare a class in java you use the class keyword public is an access specifier a modifier sorry it's an access modifier which represents visibility and it means it is visible to all so by using public keyword it means the code you are writing is visible to all and to visible to other parts of the code so that is why we use public static is a keyword if you, you if we declare any method as static it is known as static method and the core advantage of the static method is that there is no need to create an object to involve the static method that means the main method is executed by the Java virtual machine, so it doesn't require to create an object to involve the main method. So it solves memory problem. <coughs> yeah, so it helps save the memory. So that is why we may use any of these keywords like class, public, or static. Void is a return keyword for the method, and it means it doesn't return any value type. Main represents the starting point of the program string with these two um, brackets and arg which is argument is used to is used for command line argument and they will learn uh, we're going to learn it later as in how it is system out of print is used to print statements so here system is a class out is the object of the print stream class print with parentheses is the method of the print stream class, which we will look at or uh, learn about it later. <clears throat> so how to set our path? Yeah, the path is required to be set for using two such as Jevic and all of that. If you're saving 
Java file into the Java development kit bin, the path is not re um, required. That is, if you are by you put all your files into one folder or your file goes into the straight into the direct bin directory, you wouldn't need to set any path. But however, if you have a Java file outside the Java development kit folder, it's required to set your path. So let's say if you're going to develop files, you might like to save your files on the desktop. You you don't necessarily want to save it on somewhere you can find you want to locate it easily then it's necessary to search your path so there are two ways to set up path temporarily and permanently let's look at so to set your path um, temporarily all you need to do is to set a temporary path of JDK you need to follow the simple steps open the command prompt open the path of the JDK or what we call the uh, the JDK slash the bin directories that is you go to your drive C you look for the Java uh, uh, Java file and inside the Java file you're going to find a JDK and you look for you open to that path straight to bin and then you're going to see a directory so we're going to do a workable example so that we're going to see how it looks like so first of all you go to your search for uh, one of the ways there are two ways. One of the ways to go through a, a um, command um, control panel, you select open to your control panel. Then on your control panel, <coughs> you go to um, systems and security. You click on that. Then on your left side panel, you're going to see um, on, on that, you're going to see system. So you select systems. And when the system opens, you're going to see uh, on your left hand the main the list elements, system, uh, advanced system settings. So you select advanced system settings, and then on the advanced system settings, you select environment variable down there, environment variable. Then after selecting the environment variable, you realize that another menu opens, which is indicated as environment variable. In that menu. We have the we have two types of uh, um, elements inside. We have user variables for the user, and we have system variables. Now, where you're going to create your path is the user variables for the user. So you click on new, click on new, and on the new you're going to see that there is variable name inside the variable name you put in path put in the word path p-a-t-h and the next one is variable so you put in path like this and the next variable value that is where you're going to look for your variable you can click on browse to check on check on the files or straight away you can just go to your uh, your drive c and you go and search for your path so your path will look somehow like this so you go to program files java slash java date jdk and you're going to see the, the version so you see that this version is um 13.0.1 and you open to this file then you're going to see bin so when you see the bin then you copy this on the entire menu so you copy it and then you paste you come and paste it back into this value the value section that is how you create your java path so it's as easy as that and you just click ok so you get to the everything wipes out of the screen and you're good so that is as easy as that creating your java path so it, these are the sequence you need to go through first of all you you open to your control panel and your control panel you're going to see this advanced settings this is the one you select when you select that then this menu is going to open for you when this menu opens then you're going to select your environment variable and the environment variable will open this menu for you so here this is where you set your path you click on this new and then when the new when you click on the new the menu that will open for you that is where you are going to copy your path and you paste it inside so that is how to set your path and you'll be good all right so we're going to look at um now that we set our path and 
we've installed our IntelliJ and our Java development kit, it's next for us to write our code. So now let's go on to our desktop and write our first line of code. Hello guys, so at this point, if you've installed your um, Java development kit and your Java, um, um, you've also installed an editor, which is IntelliJ for the sake of this tutorial, you would have got into this stage now. So this is where you continue to um, proceed to develop your first Java program. So what you're going to do is to click here, what we see here, create new project. So by creating new project, it's going to open to a new platform for you where you follow up. So on this, we select um, our Java development kit and we proceed next and then we select create project from template and we proceed next and then we create our project name and we click on finish hello guys so at this point we write our first line of code by this simple default syntax that java gives us when we um, install our template so straight away we start writing our code by indicating system dot out dot print print line like this so we have system dot out dot print line and in this in this um, parenthesis is where we put in two quotations like that and in the quotation you put in here hello world so this is our first hello world program in java this means you write our first program in java so we can just execute our file by using this or we can use this to run our files we can also select this side and right click and we click on run or we can use this run element to run our first line of code so by running it, it will give us compile it and give us our hello world element and it will be down here so we come here and pull it up a bit so that we can see it and now it gives us our hello world. So this is how we write our first line of code in Java.